Is your Apple HomeKit smart home acting up? Scenes not working, devices going offline, and you can't figure out why? It might not be your smart home gear at all. In fact, Apple's been quietly making the wrong choice for you all along. But with iOS 18, there's finally a fix and one thing you need to do first. Stick around and I'll show you exactly how to take control of your HomeKit hub and eliminate those annoying problems for good. Until iOS 18, HomeKit users faced a frustrating problem. You couldn't choose which of your hub-capable devices, HomePods, HomePod Minis, or Apple TVs, should act as the primary HomeKit hub. Instead, Apple automatically made the decision for you using some mysterious algorithm that often made the wrong choice. This was especially annoying if you had a more powerful Ethernet-connected Apple TV and HomeKit kept assigning a slower Wi-Fi connected HomePod Mini as your hub. This poor decision making by HomeKit led to unreliable connections, delays in controlling devices, or in some cases, complete failure to execute HomeKit commands. If you've experienced scenes not working or devices randomly going offline, there's a good chance that this hub selection was part of the issue. But HomeKit came with a quirk its automatic selection of the active HomeKit hub was problematic. The active hub controls everything from automations to real-time device statuses and secure video feeds. Until recently, Apple didn't give users much control over which device served as their primary hub. With the release of iOS 18, Apple has finally given us the ability to disable automatic hub selection. This means you can assign your more reliable, higher performance devices like a hardwired Apple TV to handle your HomeKit automations instead of letting HomeKit choose something less capable. So what exactly is a HomeKit hub? How does it function? And what has Apple done to fix its frustrating automatic hub selection process? The HomeKit hub is the brain of our smart home setup. Devices such as Apple TV, HomePod, and HomePod mini can serve as HomeKit hubs. In the past, you could also use an always-on iPad but that ability was quietly discontinued a few years ago. The hub manages automations, controls devices, and acts as the gateway for accessing your smart home remotely. So yeah, it's important. The core of any HomeKit-based smart home is the active hub. The hub maintains real-time device status. The active hub continuously monitors the live status of all your devices in your HomeKit setup. This makes connecting to a device faster and more reliable than in the past. The hub runs all automations. Automations can be started by scenes, like turning on all lights when you arrive home, or based on sensor inputs that measure physical changes in our home. A lot, and I mean a lot, of sensors are supported by HomeKit. The types of sensors include motion, contact, like doors and windows, temperature, humidity, air quality, light, water leaks, smoke and carbon monoxide, occupancy, window shade position, vibration, presence, sound, and energy monitoring. Automations can also be started by triggers, things that happen in our home. Some of the triggers that can kick off automations include time-based events, device on or off state changes, location, so-called geofencing, scene activations, security camera video events, like detecting a package, and even sunrise or sunset. Want help with your smart home? I offer private one-on-one -on -one consulting to save time and money for any home automation project. Use the link on the screen for more info. The primary hub enables remote access. HomeKit is famous as one of the original smart home systems being able to run completely local without any internet connection. But when you're away from home, the hub can act as a secure entry point for controlling your devices from anywhere in the world using the internet for your convenience, safety, and comfort. For users with HomeKit secured video cameras, the hub handles video encryption, local caching for uploads to iCloud, and even object recognition for people, animals, and packages. HomeKit's hub system is excellent 
until it picks the wrong hub. Many users have encountered the problem where HomeKit selects a Wi-Fi connected HomePod or a lower powered HomePod mini as the active hub instead of a more reliable device such as an Apple TV connected via Ethernet. This automatic hub selection process has been something of a mystery. It's unclear whether HomeKit bases its choice on the best connection, the closest hub, or some other puzzling rule. Frustrating, the criteria for this decision remains secret, leading to situations where HomeKit's choice isn't always the most reliable or efficient for running automations and maintaining device connections. Why us humans make better hub choices? It's a simple fact. People know their smart home setups better than HomeKit's algorithms do. Many users have found that choosing a hub with a wired Ethernet connection provides a more reliable experience. Here's why. Wired Ethernet is more stable. Devices like the HomePod and HomePod Mini are Wi-Fi only, while certain Apple TV models offer Ethernet, which is much more reliable for maintaining connection stability. Better processing power. The HomePod and HomePod Mini run on Apple Watch class processors, which are fine for a smart speaker playing music, but struggle with complex automations. On the other hand, Apple TV have more capable processors. Memory size matters. Though Apple hasn't disclosed specific memory requirements for HomeKit hub functions, we suspect that Apple TVs with larger internal memory can handle more demanding smart home tasks more reliably than HomePods. Are you enjoying this video? By clicking on the like button, you tell YouTube what content to show you. Help me help you and click the like button now. With iOS 18, tvOS 18, and HomePod OS 18, Apple has finally addressed this issue by allowing users to manually select their primary HomeKit hub. <sighs> Getting started with manual hub selection is easy. Before you do this, you will not see the option to manually control your HomeKit hubs until all devices have been updated to version 18. Even if only one device is running an older version, the feature won't show up in the Home app. Update all your devices. Ensure that your iPhone or iPad is running iOS 18, your HomePods are on HomePod OS 18, and your Apple TV has tvOS 18. If you're using a Mac to also control your HomeKit setup, make sure it's updated to macOS 15. That's also codenamed Sequoia. After updating each device, I recommend a full power cycle to completely reboot the device. Making these changes step by step. Step 1. Update your phone and iPad to iOS 18 or later. Step 2. Update your Mac, if you have one, to Sequoia, macOS 15 or later. Step 3. Update your Apple TVs to tvOS 18 or later. All of these updates are done normally on the device itself so I won't bore you with the details. The final step requires a little more explanation. Step four, update your HomePods, including HomePod minis, to version 18 or later using the HomeKit Home app. From the iPhone home screen, open the HomeKit Home app. I'm scrolling down through all the rooms until I get to the lab couch room. In this room, you can see that I have a HomePod mini. Touching that device icon, the settings card opens up and shows me that it has automatically detected there is a firmware update available for this HomePod. I'll click on update to start the installation of HomePod firmware version 18. After I view the obligatory terms and conditions, agree, the actual update will start. Updating the firmware for a HomePod takes a long time, so please be patient. Give the HomePod a lot of time to update. In my case, I found that even after updating all my devices, Apple TVs, HomePods, iPhones, iPads, and Macs. It took a while before the new option for setting the preferred home hub showed up. So don't get frustrated. If you're doing the updates for your system right now, after you reboot everything, give it time. Go do something else and come back in a few hours. Don't do what I did. I was impatient and figured it was something wrong with my HomePod mini. I've had problems with it off and on all the time. I've owned it so I completely deleted it from my HomeKit setup. I figured I could just factory reset it and add it back later. Turns out it didn't help. I still had to walk away for a few hours 
and come back to finish this later. Once again, from my iPhone home screen, I'll start the HomeKit Home app. I'll go to the More icon in the upper right, click on the three dots to go into Home Settings, and then go down here to Home Hubs and Bridges. I click on that, and you'll see that right now, Automatic Selection is enabled for the Active Home Hub. Apple has selected the Lab Couch HomePod Mini as the Active Hub. I don't want the HomePod Mini to be my preferred hub. As I turn off Automatic Selection, a new section titled Preferred Home Hub appears. This lists all my available HomeKit hubs. From the list, I'll select the Office Apple TV. I know that it's connected over hardware to Ethernet, has a faster processor, and a lot more internal memory. I'll make that my active home hub and then simply click Done. With manual hub selection, there's a few subtle things you should know. Thank you so much for watching this video. You are awesome. If you are enjoying this video and want to see more, toggle that subscribe button, automate the bell icon, and get started on your next smart home project. Automatic fallback still works. If your primary hub goes offline, HomeKit will automatically switch to another available hub, ensuring that your smart home remains operational. Radio bridging remains active. You might know that HomeKit hubs also act as bridges for devices using Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, or Thread. All hubs perform these bridging functions, whether they are the active hub or only in standby mode. Setting the active hub manually does not affect these radio bridging capabilities. But only the HomePod Mini and certain Apple TV models can act as thread radio bridges. All HomePods and Apple TVs can bridge Bluetooth e-devices. Nothing devious here, just a simple explanation. HomePods and Apple TVs have always had Bluetooth radio hardware built in. The thread radio hardware is not part of the original full-size HomePod, was only added to the HomePod Mini and some recently updated Apple TV models. In order to be a thread radio bridge, you gotta have the thread radio hardware. Very simple. Apple's decision to let users manually choose their HomeKit hub is a long-awaited solution for anyone frustrated by automatic hub selection. With the new ability to choose the most reliable hub, we can finally control and optimize our HomeKit experience. Whether you're an avid smart home enthusiast or just getting started, Having this control brings new peace of mind to managing your Apple HomeKit home. What do you think? Have you been frustrated by the lack of control over selection of the primary HomeKit hub? Want to keep your smart home running even during power outages? An uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, is a must. Learn how to safeguard your smart home with a UPS power supply, covering everything from how they function to selecting the right model and setting it up correctly by watching this video next.